What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're gonna be talking about something that I have mentioned in passing in a few videos in the past, but I decided I wanted to make a dedicated video on this because there's still a ton of people out there that aren't aware of how you can reduce visual recoil in Modern Warfare 2. And just to be crystal clear right up front here, this video is not talking about the actual recoil or where your bullets are landing. It's more so just the visual aspect of that, which can end up impacting how you control your recoil depending on what you're able to see. If there is a lot of visual recoil, you may not be able to really tell what's going on and therefore you can't make those necessary adjustments to your recoil compared to if you could see clearly what was happening. And diving right in, the first part of this is gonna be discussing the field of view settings in the game. Not only your base field of view, but also your aim down sight field of view, whether you use affected or independent, because especially with that particular setting, this can have a big impact on the visual recoil. And for those that don't know, when you use the affected setting, this will scale with your field of view. So if you set your field of view really, really high, for instance, and you use the affected setting, when you aim down sight, you're still going to have quite a wide field of view. Obviously, it zooms in to some degree, but not nearly as much as if you use the independent option, which is going to cause you to zoom in much farther. In fact, it's completely separated from your field of view setting, so you could have 120 field of view just maxed out completely. But if you're using the independent setting, your field of view while aiming down sight will be the same as if your field of view was really low. And with the way perspective works, the more you are zoomed in, the more movement you're going to see with your sights, the more the gun is gonna jump around, at least visually, when you fire the gun, and generally speaking, the harder it's going to be to stay focused on your target in the distance, because that's also gonna be moving around a lot in your screen, again, just due to perspective. Whereas on the flip side of that, when you're zoomed out as much as possible while aiming down sight, so using the affected setting with a higher field of view setting, the target is definitely going to appear smaller for you, but you'll notice your idle sway doesn't appear to be as bad. You're not going to see nearly as much movement with your gun when you're just aiming down sight. And additionally, when you start firing your gun, the amount that your gun appears to be jumping around, as well as just your camera in general, the amount that that jumps around is lessened significantly, which can make it a whole lot easier to track your target, even when your gun is bouncing around all over the place. So that's the first big tip that I've got for you guys, and I'm sure many of you are already aware of that, but I just know that there's still a ton of people that don't know, and that's why I wanted to mention this. If you wanna reduce visual recoil, you probably wanna bump your FOV up at least to some degree. I'm not saying you should always max it out completely. In fact, I play on a 100 FOV. That just seems to be a good balance for me. But more importantly, you should try out the affected FOV setting if you haven't tried it yet. Now, if you try it and it turns out you hate it, that's totally fine. Swap back to independent. At the end of the day, use what you're comfortable with. But just know you will be experiencing more visual recoil the more zoomed in you are while aiming down sight. And going off of that, just another little tip. This is the same reason that you'll tend to see a lot more visual recoil with higher zoom optics compared to lower zoom optics. And it's one of the reasons that if I am going to be using an optic in this game, I'm generally just sticking with the standard sort of red dots or reflex optics that are really low zoom. I generally don't like higher zoom optics, partially due to the fact that they tend to have a greater aim down sight speed penalty. But another big part of that is the visual recoil. The more you're zoomed in, the more you're going to experience. And this segues into the final tip that I've got for you guys that many still haven't considered, but there are several people out there at least that are fully aware of this. This is the additional tuning that you can do to the optic attachment on your guns, and this is something we've never had access to in Call of Duty in the past. With this, if you tune toward the close side of things, your eye gets closer to the optic, and while the camera itself or your field of view itself doesn't change at all here, the size of the gun and how close you are to the gun will be changing. Whereas on the flip side of that, if you go all the way in the opposite direction to the far tuning, this moves your eye away from the gun, and again, this has no impact on the field of view that you experience, but your gun will be pushed a little bit farther away from the camera, and as a result, any sort of visual recoil when it comes to that gun or your hand like jumping around between shots, it tends to be a lot less harsh when you're tuning in the direction of the far eye distance compared to close eye distance. So if you're looking to further reduce any sort of visual bounce while you're firing your gun, tuning toward the far eye distance is often a great way to go. However, there is a bit of a trade-off here. The farther your eye is away from the optic, the smaller that sight window will appear to you. 
And therefore, in certain situations with certain optics, it may be slightly more obstructive, and that may not be something that you like. So again, this is preference-based, but if you're just looking to minimize that visual recoil, you're gonna wanna tune toward the far eye distance with your optic, assuming you're using one. And just to show you guys how much of a difference this can make, let's have a look at the two extremes. First up, this is what it looks like when you have a minimum field of view, as well as the close tuning eye distance on this optic. And while you can see that the target is quite large and you can see it very clearly, the moment you're seeing any sort of movement, whether that's with idle sway or by firing your gun, you're gonna see a lot of really jarring movement and it's gonna be very difficult to keep a focus on objects that are in the distance. Whereas on the flip side of that, if we push it all the way to the other extreme with a maximum field of view, the affected setting, and the far eye distance with the same optic as the previous setting, you'll see that it doesn't appear like there's a ton of idle sway there, even though technically speaking, it's the exact same idle sway. And also when you start firing the gun, you'll see that while the gun is jumping around a fair amount, it's not going to be as obstructive. It's not as difficult to focus on objects in the distance. And this can definitely help a lot when it comes to making those fine adjustments and staying on target because you can actually see and focus on the target in the distance rather than just having things bouncing around so much that you can't even tell what's going on in front of you. And with that, that's pretty much everything I've got for you guys in today's video. Like I said, I'm sure many of you guys were fully aware of these things already, but I just wanted to spread this information a little bit farther to the many people that are still completely unaware of this behavior. And this is where I'm curious to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. First up, what is your ideal FOV setting while playing Call of Duty? And do you like using independent or affected? And second, do you leave your optics without tuning or do you tend to tune either toward the close direction or the far direction with your optics? Just let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.